This is a short uh, level one English reading presentation on fact and opinion. When you're reading a report article, consider the following things that you're reading when it comes to facts and information. Who or what is the subject of the story? What has or is going to happen? Are you reading about something which has already taken place or that is going to happen? Where did it or will it happen? When did it or will it happen? And why did it or will it happen? Think about what the article wants to do for the audience. Is it trying to inform them, entertain them, or get them to take action, such as donate to a charity, improve their lifestyle and health, or support or oppose a cause? If you're reading an opinion-based article, you may like to consider the following when trying to take in what you're reading about. Is the author citing from personal experience about the topic they're covering? So is it something that they have, have been through or do they know people who've been through whatever they're writing about? What are the author's feelings about the topic they're covering? Are they positive or negative towards it? Can you identify the reasons why they feel the way they do about the topic they're writing about? And again, what's the intention behind what you're reading? Is the author trying to inform people or to persuade or change their minds? You're going to do an activity now, try and distinguish facts and information from opinion in a piece of writing. I'd like you to make two columns and give one of them a heading of facts and info and the other a column give a heading opinion. You're going to read through three pieces of text and I want you to sort into the columns the points which you think are facts and information and which points you think are opinion. When I show the texts, I'm going to give um, five seconds um, before I move on to the next text. So you may like to pause the video uh, and then when you uh, click play again, as I say, you'll have up to about five seconds before the video will go on to the next text. Here is the first text. Uh, you may want to put the video on pause and then uh, there will be at least five seconds before the second text appears. So read through this text and sort out uh, the points that you think are uh, come under uh, facts and information and which parts of it you think come under opinion. And the, and the video will change in five seconds from now. Here is the second text again, read through it, uh, put the video on pause and sort out the parts which you think are facts and information and which bits you think are opinion and the text will change in five seconds from now. And here is the final text, text three, again, read through it and sort out the parts which you think are fact and opinion, uh, so which bits you think are fact and information and which bits you think are opinion based. And the text will change in five seconds from now. Okay, so we'll just have a look through the text and uh, here are the parts which I felt in text one came under facts and information. So I chose the sentence in 2014 the washington post shared the pulitzer prize for public service as a result of a number of articles it had published based on documents linked by nsa whistleblower edward snowden two years later it ran an editorial calling for snowden to be prosecuted the post claimed his leaks were not in the public interest the reporters who won the pulitzer prize disagreed with the editorial Reporters had to watch as their own organisation attacked their source. The parts of that text which I felt came under opinion were, this must be impossible for the public to comprehend, especially as the limits on what can be published as part of a story are not widely known. And the media really needs to do far more to explain these limits in simpler terms for its readers. How did you do? Here are uh, what I felt were the facts and information in text two. 
When dozens of news organizations checked whether or not they had reported each of the 78 terror incidents, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer claimed had received less coverage than they have merited, they created a highlights reel of attacks connected to extreme terror attacks without being able to definitively debunk his claim. I felt there was far more opinion in this text than there was information. Uh, so I picked out these three um, examples to, to, to back up the amount of uh, opinion in this text. Sometimes fact checking backfires. Ideally, fact checking should be carried out through non-political organizations who can be independently audited. Google and Facebook could apply technological fixes so as to reduce the amount of man hours spent on this. I feel this last one is an opinion or a point of view, um, but I can understand if somebody felt that it was uh, a piece of information. But I think it's more, it comes more under opinion uh, because it is a suggestion on behalf of the, on the part of the writer. And in the third and final text, uh, which was about interview techniques, um, the facts and information in that text, I felt, came under this part. If an interview is structured well, it will begin with some small talk and a brief introduction to relax you. The interviewer will then outline the steps in which the interview will proceed. The questions will reference your previous experience or hypothetical approaches to situations. Finally, there will be an opportunity for you to ask your own questions about the role and company. And the opinion in that text, I felt, was few management people have been taught to interview. Most just bumble along and pick up a certain level of ability along the way. There are two types of interviewer who can make an interview tough for a candidate. The highly skilled interviewer knows a number of techniques which they use to bring out your knowledge and assess your suitability for the job. And the incompetent interviewer who will struggle to even phrase a question adequately so the candidate is left trying to answer questions without being sure what it is that the interviewer wants to know. In an exam situation, you may find you'll get a question which will ask you to cite um, where the um, author has made um, suggestions that um, back up a certain point of view, um, or where they've used information that may be specific to what you're reading about. Um, so in uh, something like text three, you might be asked a question which would say, give some examples of how an interview can be structured successfully. And so you might find that um, within the, the facts and information that the author has used in that text. You might also be um, asked to um, identify where the author has um, uh, put forward um, how we can identify a poor interviewer. Um, and so you might be looking for the author's point of view or opinion uh, in terms of being able to answer that question. Um, and you could, for example, quote what the author has said about an incompetent interviewer as part of that answer. If you're looking for further work on this, I would suggest that you log into BKSB and go to English Reforms, click on Reading and Reading Text, and go to the level one resource in Reading Text. Uh, you'll find that Reading Text 2 contains further work on comparing information, ideas, and opinions, and identifying meaning in texts, fact, and opinion.